the East Coast, there was Eddie Carlton's tribute to Buddy. Each sold-out performance began with a declaration of musical debt to the real Buddy in heaven. But scores of female fans, too young to remember, declared that Eddie was the one and only. The Deep South was Leonard Hank Taylor's turf. So closely did Leonard capture his country hero's heart and soul, he often confided to friends, I can only pretend the hurtin' won't claim my life, too. The West Coast was in the grip of Patrick Nelson, who did Sid. Chants of Sid lives, Sid lives, rose at every performance, and usually followed the star back to his hillside retreat, where an aide would pass on this message from Patrick. Yes, Sid will never die. Between those operators, the big-time tribute racket was pretty well sewed up. New talent had it tough breaking in. But from the north, there was coming a man who would one day smash the order and shape an all-new and almighty tribute empire. His name was Ronnie Boyles. He had a dream. You gotta chip in five bucks for the PA rental. What? You heard me. Five bucks. What if I said it was broke? I'd say the guitar stays behind till you get unbroke. Now, come on, which is it? <laughs> hey! Hey! <laughs> Thanks. And so, Ronnie Boyles took his first fateful steps on the road to worldwide tribute domination. That's the beginning to one of Stephen Penny's unfinished versions of Crime Wave. He wrote it on the back of the rent papers my father gave him when he moved into this apartment over our garage. The ending was written on the next page. It goes like this. King is dead, but he will not be forgotten. The place of Ronnie Boyle's final bow has since become a shrine, boasting of thousands of visitors yearly. Some come to wonder, others come to pray. And here's a playful young man trying to fit his face into the great man's farewell impression. <laughs> Not quite, son, but who knows? Maybe someday he'll grow to become the next tribute king. After all, for Ronnie Boyles, it started with nothing but a dream. <laughs> 